Hello, Jim here. I've had a lot of subscribers and members recently that are true beginners. They've never really sold a put option to make some good income and they really need the basics. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to get started. I'm going to share one of my favorite companies to do trades on in that Zoom. I'm going to set up a trade using the option chain and then go into detail on how it works on each part of the trading page. And this pretty much pertains to whatever broker you're using. You could be using Fidelity, Robinhood, um, Vanguard, you know, what, whatever you're using, um, it would pertain to them too. The basic pieces of a trade are typically the same. So stay tuned. Let's jump right in. Okay, I've opened up Zoom and Seeking Alpha. This is one of the tools I really like. It gives you nice graphics, give a lot of details about the company that you can look at, a lot of rankings. I also like the fact that they show you the quant ranking. Um, and the quant ranking has a lot to do with earnings revisions. And Zoom has constantly had, you know, they updated their earnings and they typically have been a lot higher if you come over and I'll show you what I mean, let's look at earnings and you'll see Zoom is, I mean, the dark gray is what the estimate was and they constantly beat their earnings big time. So they under promise and over deliver. Um, and even though these numbers look like they might not have good year over year, I think they could potentially be doing close to 140, 150 um, each quarter. So they could be like a earnings per share could be like $6 in PE. If you come back over to the summary page, the PE is currently 13.72. That could potentially, if their earnings per share is 16, that's like 11 or 12. And they have a, you know, they're a good company. They do some pretty neat things. They also are really good with profitability. Um, you know, so overall, they're just a very good company. And the fact that they constantly trade in a small range, it seems between 60 and 70, typically they'll get a little bit, you know, high into the maybe 74, 75. Their 52 week high is 75.91. But recently they've just been, it seems like between 70 and 60. And they typically always have lots of premium, lots of volume lots of strikes and expirations. So you can typically find a pretty good trade with them. Another point, and this is actually the Schwab page, if up here it has some of the same information, but it, you know, here again, you can see what the different, you know, 100 day average looks like. It's right around 67, 68, which is what the current price is. It's currently 67.57. So it's worked out really well. I've been selling uh, cash secured puts and vertical put credit spreads on them a long time and it's worked out really well here again you can see how earnings look but the other point I wanted to make was if you come down here they have no debt and any company that can function with no debt in my mind is a pretty amazing company now what I wanted to do was to show you how to do a basic trade with zoom so typically the first thing I do I'll look at the chain so here, this is within Fidelity. This is what the option chain looks like. You've got, um, you can see what the contracts look like. They set it up as little buttons. Up here, you can see different expirations. I'm only looking at three expirations, April 12th, 19th, and 26th. I typically prefer a monthly, but I wanted to show you there's still plenty of premium and um, activity on the weeklies. And you can see the weeklies are denoted with a W. And, you know, you could go farther out and pick up more premium for less of a strike. And in here, you can see all the different strikes. It's currently 67. I like to, I'm going to be trading this in my IRA and it has a lot of cash. I currently only, you know, own maybe four or five specific companies and securities so I've got plenty of cash and I can run the wheel on this so I'm kind of looking at running the wheel so I could run the wheel say with this particular 66 which is 141 and 164 there's been some open interest some volume not a ton and of course this is a weekly um 
you know, so I could I could look at that. Or I could go out to the monthly April 19th and let me show you what that looks like, 42 days. And typically it has a lot more activity. You can see all the yellow, which denotes a lot of activity. And you can see right at, one, at 65, you've got about the same amount. So I like that idea. I like 65. Um, it looks like it's between 140 and 144. Um, so let's jump into the trading page. So once I've ident identified that, so I just identified April 19th, right around 65 is a good price for me. And again, it's right in the middle of that range. So what I can do is I can say sell to open. So the actions are always these four with whatever option trade you make. You, you either have buy to open, buy to close, sell to open or sell to close. In this instance, we're selling. Um, contracts, we're opening those contracts. So someone's going to pay us some money for the opportunity to sell a Zoom. I typically like to do two contracts. So I'm going to do two contracts here. I'm going to put a put. And pretty much whatever your brokerage you use, the page is going to have the same information typically. Um, expiration, let's again pick April 19th. And then the strike was 65. And again, I believe, so it's a little bit more between 150 and 153. Now I could do a limit or I could do market limit. You can set a price. I sometimes or more often will do market because a lot of times with a limit, you have to keep trying to get that value. You may not get it right away and you might have to change the limit or the, the price. For instance, let's actually look at it. So here I could say, well, I'm, I want to, do a little bit more. So I want to do the midpoint of 151. And then I could fire this off. I could pick up $370, but it not, might not get executed. Then I might have to change the trade and I might, you know, then do bid. And a good chance the bid would get it because someone is offering. That's what they're bidding currently. But a lot of times I just like to do market. When you do market, they sometimes will do price improvement, which, which can really work out well. So this this is 294.70 for, I think it's 44 days. So it's probably a good return. I mean, if we, if we look at 294 divided by 6,500, that's a 4.5% return. But with 44, I think it's 44 days, you're talking probably, what is that? Um, so we can multiply this times 365 and it will divide by 44. We'll just assume it's 44. So it's almost like a 37% return, which, which is really good. I mean, if you can typically get that kind of a return, it's a good idea to do it. At the end of the video, this next section, I'm going to show you the last trade I did that, um, that I, I think I did it back in early February that I brought in, um, even more. And I think I did something like an 86% return. And I believe I brought in $334. But for this, you know, here you can see I'm, I am going to be using a little bit more capital because it is 65. So it'd be almost 13,000. So at this point, I could say, well, maybe I don't want to spend that much capital or use that much capital. Maybe I want to turn it into a spread, you know, so I could also click spread here. I could do Again, you know, buy to open, sell to open, same idea. So I could do the quantity that I want to do. I want to do puts and I could do the same expiration. And again, I could do, this is buy to open. So I typically like to do a, what's called a $10 spread. And in this instance, since I, I'm actually using margin. And the reason I'm using margin is my account's set up with spreads. So when you, in order to do spreads, you typically have to have margin, at least with Fidelity and, and a retirement account. So that's why it's showing margin. I typically don't worry about the, the trade type. So in this case, I can't really do it as cash. And since it's a spread, I really can't do it as a market. But I, I can still pick different... Um, bids and asks. So I could say midpoint 145. And again, we're at 287. But in this instance, 
we're using, actually, I didn't want to do 45, I wanted to do 55. And so I, the spread I was looking at was 20, not 10. So let's change that real quick. So midpoint is 265, so only a little bit less, which is what I typically look at. So for $18, it's probably worth buying the put. And you might ask, well, why would I want to buy the put? And it's to protect me on the downside. So say the unexpected happened in this time period, Zoom majorly dives. It dives to $45 a share. Well, in that instance, I might not want Zoom at the time. My, my opinion might have changed. Of course, I do want Zoom. I actually want to own them. So in a way, I don't necessarily need to buy this, but it does free up a lot of capital. So I can do the same calculation. So I can take... 265, I can divide it by, now instead of using 6,500 or 13,000, I can do it by, you know, what, what capital I require. So these are each a $10 spread, 65.55, and it's 400 shares. So it's 10 times 100. So it's $1,000 that you need minus this 265. So we could say, that, what is that, uh, 735, I guess? times two, so you're talking, well, actually that is two, so it's 2,000 minus 265, so it's, what is that, 1735? So you're talking a 15% return, and again, let's use like a factor, well, let's times it by 365 for the amount of days, and then we're gonna divide by, I think it's 44 days until expiration, and. So you're talking 126% return for Zoom and Zoom's up today. So you, I typically tell people don't sell puts unless it's a down day. But, you know, this is some pretty good premium for, uh, for Zoom. And again, the higher return is primarily because of doing it as a spread, you know, buying that put protection. I'm really only... You know, my max gain is 265, but my max loss is 1732, um, which is a lot less risk. So, like if I remove this, you would see, or if I remove the put that I purchased, you would see this amount would go up quite a bit. So, 265 or 200, yeah, $265 for you know, putting this amount of money at risk is, is well worth it in my mind. And that kind of a return you can potentially do quite often. Like I said, I've been doing this trade for many, many years and, or not many, many years, but probably two years and it's worked out. So, and again, pretty much everything you see on this page, the bid midpoint ask, you know, someone has bidded it, you know, someone else is has put a limit price out there of, of a little bit higher. And that's why you have the difference between the bid and ask and the midpoints right in the middle. So at this point, I'm ready to make this trade. Um, let's go ahead and preview the order. So you always, pretty much all the brokers give you the chance to change your mind, especially if you feel like you're making a mistake. And I've actually realized the times I put the trade in backwards, like I might have sold to open the 55 and then um, bought the 65. Um, and if you do that, it's not a big deal. If you realize it quick enough, you can actually reverse the trade, put it back in, and you might have a small loss of a couple dollars. But it's it's another situation if you run across that, because that's about the biggest mistake you could make. So at this point, I'm ready to go, and I'm actually going to go ahead and place the order. It's saying that it went through, and again, most brokers are order received. Now we can do manage the orders, and we can see if it went through. And here you can see it did go through filled. So it filled at 151 and 16, um, which is what I was looking at. So again, it's bringing in around $260. Now, if we look at my last trade that I talked about that I'd done with Zoom wasn't as good as the one I just did, but it was a cash secured put and I did it for a short time frame. I sold it at 61 is when I believe, yeah, Zoom was 60, 80. And I decided to do a, a trade. I had another one that was deep in the money and I thought, well, if I do this one, it will lower my cost basis and potentially I could own, you know, 
200 shares, you'll notice this is one contract, whereas the one I just did was two. Um, but in this instance, I brought in 334, and here's the required capital again. It's it's the 6100 minus the 334. I believe that's right. Um, yeah, three. And then it was an 86% return, which is really high for a cash secured put. I can see these kind of returns typically for a vertical put credit spread, but in this instance. You know, it's pretty surprising you can get that kind of a return. Um, and I'm beginning to think, you know, Zoom isn't overpriced. If we go back to over here, it's not really overpriced. It's a good stock to trade. It's got good profitability. It's got no debt. This is one of those situations that maybe I need to start doing four contracts instead of two to really up the ante. And especially if it's a vertical put credit spread, I could have done that same trade for, you know, less than 4,000 of required capital. And it would have been, you know, double the amount of income. So it would have been close to 500 or 520. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. And the fact that, you know, using Zoom, there's a reason I like it. I think it's kind of ridiculous that Wall Street really doesn't like Zoom. I like Zoom. I use Zoom. I've been impressed with the products and changes they've made to the product. Um, you know, and if you go back five years, people were paying outrageous amounts for it, over five, six, almost $600. So, you know, it's, it's my favorite and you can see why. So thanks for joining me as always. If you disagree or want to leave a comment, um, you think I should do something differently, I typically answer all my comments. And as always, if you want to learn more about my memberships, details will be below. I'm also an affiliate of Seeking Alpha. If you're curious about it, I will get a kickback. But I believe you can um, you can sign up for them for $189 for a year. And I think they give you some kind of a $50 gift card or something. I don't quite know how that works. So take a look below. It may be worth your time. And as always, thank you for joining me.